In the time it takes you to watch this sentence, Builder.ai just lost $150 million of value. By the time this video ends, you'll understand why a room full of cool programmers in India just accidentally exposed allegedly the biggest lie in AI startup history. And honestly, they might have done us all a big favor. If you're a developer watching this, you've probably tried one of those AI will write your code platforms. And you know the drill. You type, build me a to-do magic app, and out comes something that looks impressive in the demo, but breaks at the moment you try to add a feature. Well, Builder.ai took that frustration and turned it into a $1.5 billion business model until last week when it allegedly all came crashing down. And here's why you should care. This isn't just another startup failure story. This is about the fundamental question every developer is asking right now. Can AI actually replace coding, or are we all being sold a sophisticated magic trick? Let me paint you a picture of the core challenge that Builder.ai AI claimed to solve. This is, you've got millions of business owners and mainly entrepreneurs who have cool ideas for apps but zero technical knowledge. By rule, traditional development is expensive, time-consuming, and requires finding developers who actually know what they're really doing. Meanwhile, you've got innovative AI tools that can generate code, but anyone who's used them knows the output is often what we lovingly call AI slop, code that looks right, but fails in production. So Builder.ai positioned itself as the solution to this unmet need. Their platform, called Builder Studio, promised something revolutionary. Describe your app idea in plain English, and our AI would build it for you. No coding required, no technical expertise needed, just pure artificial intelligence magic. But here's what's really at stake, and it goes way beyond one company's rise and fall. We're living through a moment where AI coding tools are being valued at hundreds of billions of dollars. GitHub Copilot, Cursor, Replit, these tools are changing how we work. But if the AI-powered development was allegedly powered by human developers pretending to be AI, what does that tell us about the entire space? Think about this. Builder.ai raised money from Microsoft and SoftBank based on their AI capabilities. Investors believed they had cracked the code on automated software development. If they were wrong about Builder.ai, how many other magic AI coding companies are they wrong about? So, what was Builder.ai's actual solution? The story gets fascinating and slightly ridiculous. Instead of relying purely on AI to generate working applications, they implemented what they called a human-in-the-loop system. But calling it that makes it sound more sophisticated than it actually is. And here's how it really worked. You'd submit your app idea to their platform, just like they advertised. The AI would indeed generate some initial code, but then... And this is the crucial part. That code would be sent to a team of human developers who would essentially rewrite, fix, and complete the application manually. Seriously? They allegedly didn't build artificial intelligence. They allegedly built artificial invoicing. Now, before you start thinking, well, that's allegedly fraud, let me challenge that assumption for a moment. Builder.ai actually more honest about AI limitations than other companies? Let's assume OpenAI or Anthropic? Let's think about it. They never really claimed their AI could write production-ready code without human oversight. In fact, Having human developers review and improve AI-generated code is exactly what most of us do. We use tools like Copilot, Cursor, or Gemini, isn't it? The difference is big transparency and pricing. The real question isn't whether they used human developers. It's whether they were honest about it with their customers and investors. And here's where the story takes a darker turn because the human oversight wasn't the main problem. The fraud allegations center around something much more traditional. Let's dive into the technical architecture that actually brought Builder.ai down. The company was allegedly engaged in what's called round-trip billing with one of their partners. Think of it like this. Imagine you run a consulting company, and you have a friend who runs another consulting company. You invoice them for, let's say, $1 million worth of work you never did and they invoice you back for $1 million worth of work they never did. On paper, both companies look like they have $1 million in revenue, and in reality, no actual value was created. This scheme allegedly allowed Builder.ai to inflate their revenue numbers artificially. When you're trying to justify a $1.5 billion valuation, those revenue numbers matter a lot. Investors look at metrics like revenue growth, and if you can show consistent increases quarter after quarter, it magically supports your valuation story. But here's where the technical details get interesting. The fraud allegation wasn't discovered through some sophisticated AI analysis or blockchain forensics. It was discovered the old-fashioned way. Someone allegedly followed the money. One of Builder.ai's creditors allegedly noticed the suspicious billing patterns and started asking the right questions. When the creditor dug deeper, they allegedly found invoices for projects that were never completed, payments for services that were never delivered, 
and a paper trail that led nowhere. The creditor then allegedly seized $37 million from Builder.ai's bank accounts. Let's look at the concrete numbers that tell this story. Builder.ai went from a $0 valuation to $1.5 billion in just a few years. That's impressive growth by any measure. But when the issue was discovered, the company's value didn't gradually decline. It went straight to zero. That's not a market correction. That's a brutal collapse. According to Bloomberg, the $37 million seized by creditors represents roughly 2.5% of their peak valuation. In other words, the discovery of relatively small-scale alleged financial fraud was enough to completely destroy a company valued at over a billion dollars. This tells us something important about how fragile these AI startup valuations really are. So, what does this mean for the future of AI coding tools? I think we're about to see a reckoning in this space and Builder.ai might be just the tip of the iceberg. Here's a completely unscientific prediction based on industry patterns we've observed. Within the next 18 months, we'll probably see at least two more major AI coding companies face similar scrutiny, not necessarily for fraud, but for overselling their capabilities, based on the gap between what AI can actually do and what these companies claim it can do. But here's the thing, that's not necessarily bad news for us developers. The Builder.ai collapse might actually accelerate genuine innovation in AI coding tools. When the companies that are mostly marketing and hype get filtered out, the ones doing real technical work will have more room to grow. I also think we're going to see a shift toward more transparent AI human collaboration tools. The future isn't AI replacing developers. It has to be AI augmenting developers, and companies that are honest about that from the beginning will be the ones that survive. You agree? So let me give you the key learnings from this entire saga, because there are lessons here for developers, investors, and anyone interested in the AI space. First, the technical lesson. AI-generated code still needs human oversight, yes, and that's completely normal. The problem with Builder.ai wasn't that they used human developers. It was allegedly that they weren't transparent about it. When you're using AI coding tools, remember that you're the human in the loop, and that's actually your unique and cool superpower. Second, the business lesson. When evaluating AI companies, Look for transparency about limitations. Companies that are honest about what their AI cannot do are probably more trustworthy than companies that promise everything. If someone tells you their AI can build production-ready applications without any human input, be really skeptical and always ask the right questions. Third, the investment lesson. Valuations in the AI space are often based on potential rather than current capabilities. That's not necessarily wrong, but it means these valuations are fragile. When the underlying assumptions prove false, the corrections can be super dramatic. The immediate implication for current workflows is clear. Keep using AI coding tools. Use your experience. We all know they're powerful assistants, not replacements. The long-term impact suggests we're moving toward a more mature understanding of what AI can and can't do in software development. In conclusion, the Builder.ai collapse isn't just a story about one company's alleged fraud. It's a preview of the AI bubble correction that's inevitable coming. But that correction isn't something to fear. It's necessary for the healthy development of AI tools that actually solve real human problems. The companies that survive will be the ones that are honest about their capabilities, transparent about their limitations, and focused on genuinely helpful human AI collaboration rather than magical marketing claims. Never trust on miracle returns on investments. Because if Builder.ai taught us anything, it's that sometimes the flashiest presentations aren't built on the most robust or innovative technology. So, if you want to stay ahead of these trends, understand what's really happening in the AI space, please subscribe. Hopefully you found today's topic valuable. Stay updated, keep learning, and I'll see you in the next video.